at the age of 74 from Alzheimer's disease. In the 1960s, Neville co-founded the countercultural magazine Oz, known for its use of satire and pop art alongside serious journalism. The magazine took aim at the establishment with Australia's abortion laws and the white Australia policy among its targets. Peter Kingston worked on Oz as a cartoonist and remained close with Richard. He joins us now. Peter, welcome. What are your memories of, uh, of Richard? There's not many people in this world that you can say you truly love them. And I loved Richard. And boy, it, it, he, he, he was just the most human, helpful, encouraging, divine person. And uh, I'm very sorry he's died, but I'm glad for him because he was in a bad way. But um, he, I met him in a lift at the uh, Chevron Hilton at the Cross. We were both applying for a job in the Silver Spade room. How long ago was this? Uh, 60s sometime. Yeah. And he, he, he looked like the fifth Beatle. He had the same, it was the same time as the Lots Beatles. Of. And yeah. uh, I told him, he told me, I t he said he worked on Thurunka as the editor. And I said, oh, I can do cartoons when I couldn't. So uh, I said, oh, he said, well, do some cartoons. So I went home that night and did some cartoons. and. Um, it, it just opened a whole life to me that Richard actually gave to me. And, and you never forget people like that all through your life who encourage you. Like Martin Sharp always encouraged mm. you. And uh, two great, both gone now, which is terribly sad. Well, of course, he came to prominence uh, with the magazine, The Oz, as we, as we mentioned, a counterculture magazine. It was described at the time as, as crude, witty, smart and obscene. Now, of course, it was the uh, supposed obscenity in the magazine that, that, yes. that tripped... Um, that tripped him up and led to a court case, both yes. well, certainly in the UK, where he was sentenced to, yes. to jail. Well, it was a stroke of luck, the obscenity, because it brought the, made the magazine quite yeah. famous. I always thought, why are they doing a magazine about the Wizard of Oz? I, I didn't... <laughs> I, 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 it dawned on me later, Oz was Australia. And anyway, we all met down at the, the nurses' walk down at the rocks, with, uh, and Robert Hughes was involved, and it was like... The, the early form of the chaser in that it was a magazine that was 16 Ozzes to the pound. They put good looking girls on street corners, sold every edition. You cannot get a, a, a copy of the first Oz for love or money these days. And um, Richard's just been through all my life. We've never, never, I mean, he made, uh, he, he made me squirm a lot. That was Richard's forte, is to make you squirm. But uh, w w he came together on the Opera House. I was an architectural student, mm. and there's some footage you've got here of us all demonstrating against the, um, the getting rid of Woodson over the Opera House. The Opera House, one of the best things and one of the worst things that ever happened to this country. So I do remember walking down to Benelong. That's probably the first time I saw a political demonstration in Sydney. You'd hear about them in South Africa, in other places. And I was incredibly touched by that. And I have to say something that at that time, I wouldn't have given much of a stuff about opera back then. It wasn't the opera that got me. It was the kind of gallantry that got Woodson and his admirers. I'm just interested, Peter, what actually drove Richard? What was his motivation? I mean, we look back to the Oz magazine and it was issues like the White Australia policy and abortion, for instance. Yes, well, I think he had a conscience, Richard. But don't forget we'd all been suffering under, what, 30 years of Menzies and our parents all voted for Menzies and, and, and it wasn't until Whitlam came along that there was a big change in the culture here. And uh, I, I think Richard uh, was a bit of a seer. He called himself a futurist and he, he could see injustices and he could see a strangling of, of free thought and things like that and it all congealed into the um, Oz magazine with and Martin Sharp of course made my, mm, Oz magazine with his magnificent cartoons and uh, Martin came from a very privileged background Richard and I came from more battlers background but everybody voted for Menzies. <laughs> did he change the world? D did we change it? Yeah. Um, Sure. I mean, well, we, we couldn't save Utzon, unfortunately. You know, that was... Uh, that, that, uh, today, if that had happened with Utzon, he, he would have stayed. Because the government is not the client in this thing. The people are the client. There's a bit of communism for you. So, <laughs> but was he simply articulating what people of that generation, the younger generation, were thinking in the time of, yeah. of Menzies and post -Menzies? Yeah, frustration. Frustration at, at, at this rigid sort of... Uh, um, or it was, it was illegal to be gay even then? Illegal, illegal, you know? So um, it was a very re a restricted time, I think. And uh, uh, I think Oz grew out of the restrictions, as Richard says in that clip.
what do you think his legacy will be? Well, more of this, more of uh, <laughs> more of standing up for principles and and good Rightly things. against the yes, establishment. Yes, yes. He loved nature. He loved. Uh, he very cared deeply cared about the nature and, and all that. But I'll miss him making me squirm. All right. Well, we're so glad that you could come in and share some memories, Peter Kingston. Thanks very much. Pleasure.